Thank you for attending the third Cannabis Investor webcast. I would like to thank our platinum sponsors, Lexaria Corporation and Viridian Capital and Research. Please view the Viridian Cannabis Industry Report, which can be found on our website or at viridiancr.com. Please type any questions for the presenter in the questions box. Our speaker today is Casey Stark. CEO and President of Marijuana Business Academy. I will now turn the screen over to you, Casey. Good morning. Can you hear me, Darren? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, I'd like to first thank you for the work you've done. It's one of the most uh, intellectually honest platforms I've seen uh, in the industry. I'd like to also thank Adam with MJ Holdings. That was an excellent presentation, and real estate is one of the key assets in this industry and it's in high demand right now, uh, no pun intended, so I'm definitely going to contact Adam. But it's a great day in America and it's a great day for entrepreneurs and investors. And we will have our disclaimer, the forward-looking statements. Uh, we're going to do a quick market analysis of what we've seen happen and what we see happening in the future and what the Marijuana Business Academy does specifically on a macro and micro level. And we will approach this as a military operation. My background is U.S. infantry. Uh, we believe in 360-degree awareness. And uh, business is like war. Uh, there's winners, there's losers. And the more you plan and the more you know, uh, the bigger your chances of success. It's a very competitive market, unlike anyone I've ever seen. It's marijuana, it's money, and it's America. So what we'd like to do is uh, tell you a little bit about the Marijuana Business Academy. Uh, we were founded in 2010 uh, to solve a problem, and that was to fill the knowledge gap. And that problem has been solved over and over for hundreds of clients of ours from Alaska to Florida. Our headquarters is here in Colorado, uh, which we call the epicenter of the revolution. It is the most developed and regulated and watched market for cannabis on the planet currently. And it has shown to be very effective. Let's go ahead and we're going to play a little uh, sizzle reel here of what we've done here in the past. Let's go ahead and snap that. El Steve Jobs de la marihuana. So you're the Steve Jobs of medical, of marijuana, of the legal marijuana world. The pot industry could reach up to 8.2 billion in just the next four years. Casey Stark is the CEO of the Marijuana Business Academy. It's a Colorado-based company that helps so-called Americans have found out that that plant is saving their lives and creating jobs. It is what this country was built on. We are tired of prohibition. We have ended the war on drugs. Why? Because we can vote. And that's the most beautiful thing about what we've seen is this truly is a grassroots effort. This is not a top-down revolution. This is a social, economical, uh, industrial, medical, recreational revolution that's being led by the people across this country. And this is one of our key graphics that we created for this presentation. And if you look across it, you can see these little spaceships of marijuana plants landing across our country. Uh, the red states, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Colorado, have all medical and recreational marijuana laws on the books. If you look across the white states with the green uh, flags, those are the medical marijuana states and also decriminalization. The United states are living and earning and developing as well. So you can look across our great nation and see that the opportunity uh, abounds. And we think nationally now. This is, as Adam said it's in the previous uh, presentation from MJ Holdings, it is a commodity. It's a lot like orange juice. Once these markets are established, uh, we can do a pretty good job of seeing what the future is going to happen. And go ahead and uh, copy this map from your screenshot if you can. Use it, spread it. Let's go to the next screen. Let's take a quick look at the marijuana markets. And we've been doing this for five years, and we're pretty deep, and our matrix is pretty wide. Uh, MMJ plus RMJ equals USA. This is perhaps the largest economical social change we've seen in our lifetime. Uh, the ending of prohibition after almost 80 years. If we look at the MMJ markets, we see 24 states with MMJ laws. Nine states in Guam have legalized medical marijuana. Five states have only decriminalized possession laws. And only 22 states 
actually have cannabis as being illegal on a federal level still, which is profound. And of course, we have the four states that have gone red, what we call recreational. Uh, let's look on the recreational markets real quick and look at some of these key numbers, because these are interesting. Uh, the markets here, we have Alaska, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. And those are all done by ballot initiatives. Once again, this is a grassroots effort. And if you're in a state that doesn't have medical or recreational marijuana, give us a call. We'll help. Um, Colorado, Washington, and the cities of Portland and South Portland and Maine have fully legalized marijuana for both MMJ and RMJ. Alaska and Oregon are in the process, and D.C.'s legalization is currently being blocked by Congress. These two numbers in the bottom are interesting. From January through August to here in Colorado, uh, where we look at the market analysis, we've seen MMJ sales reach $33.4 million. In the first eight months, recreational marijuana has caught up and matched that at $34.1 million with medical marijuana being around very actively for five years in Colorado and, medical, and recreational here for only eight months or 12 now. Uh, it's pretty profound. Let's go to the next screen. Let's take a look at the Colorado tax numbers too because we're trying to look at our business models and what we should do with our money and how we should invest across the country, whether you're doing MMJ holdings or you're going to start your own business. Sales revenues are interesting to follow. From January through August, the first month of recreational marijuana sales in America, we had $3 million in sales tax revenue combined between the two entities, RMJ and MMJ. As of August, we had three consecutive months of over $7 million in sales tax collections. And Nerd Wallet, which is a fun little website, actually states that just over, if we did legal it across the states, we'd have $3 billion in tax revenue, which is insane. Look at the two to four states that may go medical marijuana by 2016. It'll help you look at your portfolios and where you should invest. Look at Florida, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Ohio by November 2016. Michigan has established medical marijuana laws, but they're immature and need to be released, and that will happen soon, we see. On the right-hand side, let's look at these numbers again on the recreational, medical mar on the recreational marijuana side. We have the 38%. In January 2014, the first month of recreational marijuana sales in America, 38% of the RMJ sales were outside of Denver County, the revenues collected. As of August of this year, 55% of the sales tax revenue collected for recreational marijuana is being collected outside of Denver County. And this flies in the face of a lot of the people that we talk to that want to start these businesses. They seem to have a, uh, a mile high um, infatuation. But don't just look at mile high, look across the state. There's 64 counties and Adams County just yesterday released uh, new recreational marijuana laws and rules and they're having a lottery system for 10 marijuana operations. So look at Adams County, this is going to be big. If we look ahead, recreational marijuana November 2016, Arizona, California, Maine, Massachusetts, Nevada. Looking ahead to 2017, Delaware, Hawaii, Maryland, New Hampshire, Vermont, Missouri. Hallelujah, Missouri. Let's go to the next screen. If we keep an eye on our do-nothing Congress, we can see that the only thing they do seem to agree on is marijuana, which is uh, quite uh, entertaining. The Republicans and the Democrats and the independents passed an amendment on the House floor just two weeks ago that prohibits the use of Justice Department funds to interfering with state-level medical marijuana laws. On the right-hand side, there are, two, there are three other bills currently uh, at our House, which, one, give the states rights to enact their own marijuana policies without federal interference. Two, allow VA doctors to rec recommend medical marijuana, which is profound. Here in Colorado, we have an abundance of veterans, and we've seen remarkable results with cannabis. Uh, three, prohibit federal government from seizing your property unless you've actually committed, been convicted of a crime. So if you're actually looking at this as a business across this country and you're watching this webcast, these are some critical numbers and some critical developments and some critical analysis that should help you plan your business, plan your operations like a military strategy. Gather your assets, your abilities, your talents, your teams, the properties, and then move forward smartly. Let's go to the next screen here. The MMJ Business Academy helps startups, investors, and current owners navigate the legal web of regulations and take advantage of market opportunities in America's quickly expanding cannabis markets. 
we've done this over and over again. We are tried, true, proven, and tested. Our integrity is our greatest asset. And the best thing to tell you about that is not me, but actually our clients. So let's go to our clients here. Uh, we work with startups Hi, this is Casey with Marijuana Business Academy, CEO. Our mission at the Academy is to help you learn, plan, build, and succeed in the cannabis industry. If you want to be in the marijuana industry, start at MarijuanaBusinessAcademy.com. From Riverside, California. New Mexico. Texas. Denver, Colorado. Taos, New Mexico. I'm looking to get into retail and also cultivation. Selling edibles and really great tinctures and retail sales. I'm interested in recreational and, and medicinal. Planning and zoning issues. You can't go wrong by being in a part of this academy. There's a lot of different businesses that you can get into. It's a wealth of knowledge, um, a good uh, ground floor of how to succeed in this business and what it takes. All the information that I received today was, it really blew my mind. I think that the information was really important in terms of the rules. I didn't know a lot of the stuff. How to get the right permits and the timing for those permits. Keep you well covered, insured. The whole package is here. Because being a part of it is so exciting. So those are some of our startup clients. And those are what we do our seminars almost every 30 to 45 days across the country, uh, helping these startups. And that's where it's uh, very interesting for me to see these other CEOs on here today, like Adam uh, with MJ Holdings, and how our industry can work together with those other CEOs that specialize in property or ventilation or application developments. Uh, we also work with established businesses and have been doing it for years. And our mission is really to help you turn your ideas into a concrete reality. You know, this is not a fantasy world we live in. We, we put the blood to the pavement. And let's go ahead and see what our clients have to say. My name is Brent Burnham. I am the owner of Green Earth Wellness Center here in Colorado Springs. And we've been working with the Academy for a couple of months. Now they're helping us to achieve our dreams as far as moving into other states with different investors, different opportunities, helping us to stay within the boundaries of the law. The Business Academy has helped us procure lenders, which is a very challenging thing into itself, as well as real estate. Real estate is a tough commodity in this business. And that's one of our clients. We'll go to one more. This is My name Gina. is Gina Haynes, and I manage the herb shop here in Colorado Springs for the owners. We met Casey when we opened our business. He was very instrumental in helping us get our marketing going. He developed our website that we still get our compliments on today. He developed coupons that brought patients in. Um, he is very passionate about the business, and he not only helped us, he helped many other shops. Thank you very much, Gene. So the best way to talk about ourselves is our clients. You know, they're our greatest asset. We are nothing without you. If we are able to help you, that is our testimony. I've started and sold many marijuana businesses, consulted with hundreds of owners across the country, served in the Mayor's Marijuana Task Force, founded Go Green Cross, MMJ Exchange, the Marijuana Business Academy, MMJ Centers for Sale, MMJ IQ, and Studio A64, which is America's first licensed brick and mortar cannabis club sanctioned by a government body. And that's a profound uh, statement because nowhere in the rules is it written that you can have a cannabis club. I've helped ensure a financially viable business focused industry, and that's my plan. If we can raise all ships, uh, all tides at once, uh, this nation will be very green and covered in gold. Uh, my name is Casey Stark, and I'd like to introduce you to my partner and co-founder and chairman of the board at the Marijuana Business Academy, Mr. Charles T. Houghton. Charles T. Houghton's PC law firm is dedicated to providing businesses compliance, licensing, and regulatory advice to the recreational and medical marijuana industry. Charles sat on the Colorado Springs Medical Marijuana Task Force, which assisted the city in developing a regulatory framework. He represents dozens of marijuana centers and infused product manufacturers throughout the Colorado and Canada. Charles is also a frequent speaker and lecturer on the business and regulatory aspects of the medical marijuana industry. Every business I have founded, I have worked with Mr. Houghton. He has protected those assets uh, all the way to actually setting national precedents. Uh, he does work with me hand in hand. Uh, my abilities uh, through the business and his abilities through the legal knowledge is a rather nice yin and yang. So if you do need help, we'd be glad to help. Let's go to the next screen. The MMJ Business Academy offers comprehensive step-by-step -step training platforms covering critical topics 
Each one of these can sync your battleship. The qualification process, applications, tracking, medicine, money, retail, cultivation, entity choice, leasing, insurance, banking, security, inventory, state filings, taxes, special allocations, federal tax issues, compliance, tracking, accounting, theft prevention, and essential tips to help avoid failure. And that's what we see in this business, that it is so beautiful and so attracting, it really is a Pikes Peak or Bust moment where the opportunity is so profound that simple mistakes can really cost you a great deal of time, money, and perhaps your business. It's a very highly regulated market, and it does change daily, daily. Let's go to the next three. Coming up on January 31st here at the Whitman Grand Hotel, we'll be doing one of our signature events, our eight-hour seminars. That will be followed by a six-hour networking after party at the Studio 64 Cannabis Club, followed on Sunday, the February 1st, by our Investor Roundtable, where anyone who attends the seminars will be able to actually pitch their ideas and receive feedback and potential funding. And if nothing else, a lot of information that could help save your battleship. Our team takes your business from concept to brand launch. From market analysis to market acquisitions, our clients include micro mom and pops, really strawberry farmers, all the way to multi-millionaire platformers and venture capitalists. That's enough. Let's go forward. The Marijuana Business Academy. Our big picture is to help this country and really raise all tides at once, to work with other professionals throughout the nation to ensure that that market is viable that it does not suffer, and that all tides can raise all ships. On the right-hand side of your screen, at least on mine, stage left, the original Canvas Club. We practice what we preach. We do as we speak. We walk the talk. Nowhere in those rules and regulations is there a license or standard for a Canvas Club. But with the passage of recreational marijuana laws, the question presents itself, where do they go? Are we separate? Are we equal? Will, will we be treated the same? I launched Studio 64 to prove a point, and she was built for one thing, battle. And to win that battle, if she did, she would set a national standard. So take a look at this. Well, I've seen lightning. I've seen rain. I started Studio 64 to answer the question, could we have a club where Americans could meet consume cannabis, and no one goes to jail. A64, if it works, this could be the Starbucks of Cannabis Cafe. The difference between A64 and a bar is you go to a bar and you see a bunch of people just like totally annihilated. You come here and you see people creating things and you see people supporting each other and empowering each other, whether it's music, poetry, and it's beautiful. Everybody's happy and smiling. It's always a positive, uplifting experience. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public mic. If you haven't been here before, this is only going to be a mic in the world because you can come to the stage any time you want because this is America. We're taking it back. One drum beat at a time. This is a hub where politicians, artists, poets meet and change the world. It's a private club. Because just like the VFW, just like the Elks Club, you know, this is America. We have rights. Inalienable. I said, lady, 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 lady. So when we took a look at the past, and like we've done today, we're looking at the market analysis. When that video was made, we did not know the future, but we knew our rights. We had a plan. When we went against the fourth most conservative district in this nation, we fought the mayor, we fought the city police, and two days after 420, Studio 64 won its fight with the city of Colorado Springs voting five to three in favor of its continued existence. So this was profound. And there's a lot of people in this industry, and you must be careful, but we practice what we preach, and that's what this video is about, is that we don't just throw you out there to the sharks. 
we are the sharks. We like the water. Uh, we enjoy a good, clean fight. And if you know your rights, if you know the markets, if you know yourself and you know the enemy, you will win a hundred battles. So this is our contact data. So if you are out there and you have questions, we will be glad to provide answers. Uh, start at mmjbusinessacademy.com. If you want to stay up to date on what's happening across the country, I do recommend our YouTube channel, MMJ Exchange. And our Twitter feed is very active. I don't send pictures of me and my cat, uh, but it is a very active Twitter feed. So if you want to stay in the know every hour, I recommend MMJIQ at Twitter. You can also book online at MMJ Business Academy or HowToMarijuana.com. If you do have questions, that is my direct line, 719-930-9846. And our next event is coming up on January 31st here in Colorado Springs. So I'd like to close with that. I'd like to thank, once again, the Investor Webcast and my previous speaker, Adam. That was a great start of the day. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to help. All right, KC, give me a couple of seconds to queue up questions. I'll just get my vitamin C, no problem. First question, could you explain what's going on as far as uh, the legislation in D.C.? Well, the legislation in D.C., what we've seen from the Republicans and the Democrats there is they kind of came to an agreement that allowed them both to save face. And if you read their statements from the speakers, uh, it's uh, basically a, a, a yes and a no at the same time. Uh, they're currently blocking it from proceeding uh, almost on procedural matters, uh, but it will occur. It is a, just a matter of time. Our city council member here in Colorado Springs, we lost the recreational marijuana vote by one vote, and the city and city council member stated that, you know, gentlemen, it's not a question of uh, if, but when. So that would be my quick answer to D.C. Okay. And if you're there, be active. You know, don't uh, be the change. You know, go there. Speak, march, uh, be active, and you might surprise yourself. Next question. There's a lot of estimates going, going around as far as the total medical marijuana market and the total recreational marijuana market. Do you, do you have an a estimate that's, uh, I guess they're trying to say that, you know, it's just a lot of estimates going around. What is your estimate of the total dollar medical marijuana market and recreational marijuana market? The only way to predict the future is to look at history. So once again, we're making forward-looking statements. Please check with your advisor, etc. So with what we've seen is just in the first uh, several years of this, we're seeing a $2 billion market. I, I believe that's the same size as Viagra, and Viagra advertises on TV. This marijuana is not being advertised like a commodity yet, and we're at $2 billion. You know, ArcView, Huffington Post, and many others are reporting up to a, a $10 billion market by 2018. That's, that's a remarkable growth. And if you look at the map on your screen, you can see why, because all across this country are these little marijuana spaceships called Americans that are changing and overturning and rewriting the laws to create a, an environment for uh, entrepreneurs to succeed. And currently with the um, OTC markets and the the big boards, you know, you don't even grow marijuana to, you know, be successful. You can invest in these businesses across the country. So yeah, I see big money. It's gold, it's green, America's, uh, it's Pike's Peak or bust all over. Next question. You have many services. What would you say is your core service or services? Very simple. Knowledge. You know, if you're going to go to war and you don't know who you are or what the enemy is doing, or what the terrain is like, or what the rules of engagement are, you're going to find up with an endangered squad and an enemy that might overrun you. So knowledge is the greatest power. Gotcha. Next question. Uh, where do you see big pharma and big tobacco uh, going forward? 
any room for the little guy, uh, for instance, New York, I think uh, they're saying something about $20 million to apply for a license. Uh, so in the future, is it going to be any room for the little guy or, or it's just big tobacco, big pharma? What do you see? I'm not a prophet, but once again, I can look at the history of what we've seen in the most developed and most competitive and most aggressive market in the world. That's Colorado. This is, once again, it's marijuana and it's money and it's politics. That is a trifecta of madness. But what we're seeing is that everyone has a chance. It's based on you, your plan, your abilities. And what we do at the Academy is we don't try to turn apples to one. Well, we take your background, whether it's real estate or finance or heating, ventilation, security, human resources, and try to model what you've done in the past and apply it to this industry. So your learning curve is shorter, your chances of success are higher. But we do work with mom and pops all the time. So let's make a real world comparison. Here in Colorado, in Golden, is Coors Brewery, you know, the biggest brewery in Colorado. And yet, in that same town, you'll find microbreweries that are very successful. So how can that be that some mom and pop microbrewery can go in, you know, Coors backyard and, and be successful. Why? Because they have a good plan, they know who they are, they know who they want to be, they understand the markets. But don't be what you want. Find out what you have, what you can do, and contact us. And if you look at the states, you do see different regulatory models. $400,000 here, Illinois, a max of 21 uh, cultivation sites and 60 of this. Uh, Adams County in Colorado just announced yesterday a lottery system. So you have just as much of a chance at that lottery system as anyone else does. Uh, so, and let's address that for a second. When you look at the states, we're seeing different levels of entry. You have the first come, first serve models. You have the point systems, who has the most points on their application based on their analysis and team. And then you have the lottery systems. So there's three different ways that we're seeing across the country that you can play this game. Uh, Colorado is by far the most capitalistic friendly. It's a free market. It's a for-profit market, uh, red, white, and blue all the way. And I hope that answers your question. Next Call. question. Next question, Casey. I need suggestions on how to get an investor for my clothing line, but I live in the Bible Belt, Tennessee. Tennessee has been approved, from what I understand, for hemp studies but banks would not touch any marijuana-related projects. Well, that's why there's private capital out there. You know, that's, and banking is changing. Right now, there's currently several, I mean, all across this country, from, from the White House to uh, our Congress here and uh, our capital here in Colorado. You no, know, banking law is going to change. It will, it must, it, it's going to happen. But if you're there and you need it now, one, you can reach out to private investors. Uh, two, uh, if you're there, become an active part of that change. Uh, we're doing a, for example, uh, a local artist here won a, won a fashion competition. We reached out to that local artist and offered her uh, connections with the hemp industry. And now that fashion designer and the Marijuana Business Academy is launching on 320 here in Colorado Springs at the Windman Grand, our hemp spring fashion show. So yes, contact me. Let me know who you are. Let's find out what you need and start playing Marijuana Matrix. Okay, next question. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. You watch. New York City, they're going to have fashion shows and hemp's going to be the new black. You have uh, designers coming out with marijuana, hemp products and hats because it's going to be the coolest thing. Hemp's going to be big. It's coming back to America. Next question, KC. How many client companies are you working with and in which states? Hundreds. From Alaska to Florida, uh, our furthest clients are in Japan. Uh, we're reaching out to Uruguay, uh, Bolivia, Chile, uh, Germany. Um, this is an international commodity. We don't think small anymore. This is not just an American thing. Uh, what we do, others follow. We are breaking our own United Nations treaties and so are other nations. We have hundreds of clients. 
Uh, I can show you them, but uh, not all of them want publicity. That's why we have the videos and we want and allow them that uh, that voice. But my main goal is to help you. You know, how can I help you as a client? Next question. In Denver or, or states that recreational marijuana is legal, where can you indulge in recreational marijuana? Like, for instance, the hotels or the clubs, uh, it's not, I don't think you can smoke it in those, those places. So would a place like the social, the cannabis club or Studio A64 be like one of the places that you can actually smoke re recreational marijuana? Studio A64. I repeat, is America's first license pretty more sanctioned cannabis club. It's a very tricky model. People have tried it and gone to jail for it. People have tried it and been shut down. Uh, there is currently a bed and breakfast in Denver that is trying to establish itself and is facing that that ebb and flow of you know, what is public and what is private. Now, we've defined it here with Studio A64. So if you do want to open up a cannabis club, uh, we do offer licensing. We are looking for people that do want to work with us that are in the entertainment industry, that are in the uh, licensing and the um, franchising industry. Because Studio A64 has proven the point. It does work, and we've done it very uniquely. In Denver, you just saw last week, Seth Rogen, an international known comedian, announced that he was going to come to Colorado and smoke in public and watch, or smoke in private and watch his film. So he saw some pictures and was forced uh, to shut down his event in Denver after a few uh, telephone conversations with the local police. So what we do at the social club is very, very special. Seth Rogen could not pull it off. Sony could not pull it off. We can pull it off. Sony knows pictures, we know marijuana. Seth knows comedy, I know the rights. So it is the places you can go currently, limousines. A limousine is licensed just like a, in the same fashion with liquor. The driver is separated and it is a contract. And if that has proven to be effective, so the limousine and tourism industry or transportation does seem to be a viable market. The bed and breakfast is yet to be truly tested in court. So you can open one, but unless you're proven and tested and you've actually gone to court, then I question the uh, longevity of your business model, which is why the studio was specifically built for battle. We put ourselves in the heart of the city, right next to a fire department, across from where the mayor eats his lunch, because we have to prove and test our ideas or they're not businesses, they're hobbies. So with the Studio A64, what is proven is that with a very unique model and a very developed strategy that you can open and operate a social club in America. So if you do need help and you are looking to start your own, I recommend don't look for a place to do it. Call me and start your own. We'll help you. Okay, next question. Uh, what is the rollout plan for Studio A64, and if you could give uh, potential revenue per club? Oh, it is profound. That's, once again, this is a battleship. She was built for battle. She survived that battle just this year on April twenty second, 2014. So since that time, April second, 2014, we have doubled in sales, doubled our staff, and increased our profits substantially. Uh, we will not discuss specific numbers here. If you do want to own and operate one of these things, you better be in it for blood and guts and not money, uh, because this is military to me. You know, I want believers. I want doers. I don't want someone chasing gold. But if you believe in what we do, if you're ready to take a chance, we have proven and tested this. We want these in every city in this nation in 10 years. So if you do have a background and you do have a resume, we'd be glad to talk to you. Contact me, it's simple, and we'll have license agreements. And they're very unique. For example, this uh, we have millions of dollars in press with the original Cannabis Club. We have news stories from Sweden all the way to Japan on this Cannabis Club. 
uh, and we haven't spent a dime in advertising, uh, but because of what she's done, uh, her value as a brand, many cannabis clubs will come and go, but there will only be one original, and that is Studio A64. So if you want to play the game of marijuana, and you don't want to deal with all the state regulatory application processes and the cultivation, and you're looking for an ancillary market model, uh, I'd suggest Studio 64 is a very fun way to spend your days and nights. On New Year's Eve, we have a three-course menu prepared by a culinary award-winning chef uh, with uh, infused dinners. We have our fashion show. Uh, the studio can make money in more ways than you can shake a stick. Uh, you just have to be very good at what you do and how you plan it and where you launch it. So if you do want to, uh, contact me. We'll help. Next question. We see state legislation progressing. Any comments on federal legislation? Oh, yes. We went to that federal regulation um, in the presentation, you know, with the just two a week ago. You know, the Republicans and the Democrats in this country the Do-Nothing Congress actually agreed to pass a law that prohibits the Department of Justice from using funds to prosecute, pursue uh, those people in those states that are abiding by their state-level medical marijuana laws. We've also seen the three bills at the federal level that gives the states their rights to enact their own marijuana policies that allows the VA, the VA, to recommend marijuana. Um, and prohibits the federal government from seizing your property unless you've been convicted of a crime. Uh, typically in today's world, they just take it, sell it, and then worry about convicting you later. So look at the red, white, and blue, and you'll see a lot of green and gold. And if you have more questions, contact us. We'll help. Okay, let me see if I can ex explain this next question, KC. Uh, a lot of uh, people that were involved in the marijuana industry has felons at this point in time. Uh, so when it does become legal, do you think those felons would be able to participate in the legal marijuana industry? Yes and no. Right now, let's look at the facts again. The only way I can predict and answer the question, sir, is to, or ma'am, is to look at the past. And right now in Colorado, what we're seeing with the change in the laws is that the application authorities are looking back and saying, well, if you were convicted of a crime for marijuana possession or trafficking that would not be considered a crime today because of changes in the laws, well then, was that really a crime then? You know, so society, once again, this is a social, economical, political change here. So we're changing the way we look at, at criminals. We're changing the way we look at felons. We're changing the way we, we look at ourselves as a nation. You know, are we going to incarcerate people for the rest of our lives, or are we going to help them turn into entrepreneurs? So I recommend that if you do have felons on your record, uh, that you might want to watch what happens at the, the state levels, because they are looking at that and saying, well, if that was a crime, but it's not a crime today based on their changes in laws, your chances of survival is, are going to increase as an applicant. But there's ancillary markets, too. Let's say you grow marijuana, you've been convicted of a crime, you're considered a felon. Well, you may not be able to have a directly issued state license, but nothing's stopping you from beginning being a remarkable consultant or a grow builder or a designer uh, or a caregiver. So there's a lot of ways to enter this market. So are you still there, Casey? I'm still there, yes. Okay. Uh, the next question. Is that the last question for today? One more question. Uh, we, do you think Florida will pass next go-around? Uh, the next go-around is 2016. It would be, uh, it almost uh, would be silly not to think it would do. Uh, with the 58% uh, at the last one being a not in a general election year. Uh, typically in a general election year you see a much bigger turnout. And I would challenge you in Florida to watch our video. Uh, we've been telling people that, you know, if you look at the Supreme Court decision in Florida years ago, um, 
marijuana is legal by the definition of your Supreme Court in Florida. I believe you're chasing in Florida a, uh, a little bit of a gray goose here. You know, in Colorado, over 1,800 Americans opened up marijuana centers with a single statement from Eric Holder saying that we will not prosecute you based if you're abiding by your state laws. So without any laws in the books, no House Bill uh, 1284, no Senate Bill 109, Americans in Colorado jumped ahead of the market and risked everything. In Florida, go to our YouTube channel, look for the Florida Marijuana Is Legal video, and you'll see a Supreme Court case that actually shows you the reality of the moment. You may not have to wait as all the lobbyists are suggesting. If you look at your laws and you know your laws, you may find that marijuana already is legal in Florida. And I'm not saying it, it's the Supreme Court. But I'm a very aggressive businessman, so it's not for everybody. But uh, marijuana is legal in Florida. Ask your Supreme Court and stop following your lobbyists around and giving your money would be my suggestion. Well, that concludes our uh, question and Q&A. Any closing remarks, Casey? Yes, absolutely. If you are interested, really, mom and pops all the way to multimillionaires. Now, our, we understand the marijuana matrix, and that's what we've done. That's what we live and breathe. And I really do want to thank you again, Derwin, because this is, one of the most intellectually honest formats I've seen. It cuts to the chase. I'd like to thank all the other CEOs and CFOs and COOs out there. And if you're a mom and pop, so was I. You know, the Marijuana Business Academy is with two guys in cowboy boots four years ago, and now we are a publicly traded company uh, and across the country. And we did not start with money. We did not start with investors. We started with a very simple idea and a very focused path. So if you have an idea and you're looking for a path and you need some focus, give us a call. Come to the event on the 31st. You'll not only learn the A to Z's in eight hours, but you'll have a six-hour after party uh, at the Cannabis Club. And if you want one of those, give us a call as well. Durin, great work, and I'd like to wish the best to the few that follow after us. Uh, this is our country, and every American can take it back. Thanks, KC. That concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you for attending the Cannabis Investor webcast. The next presentation.